This is Jarak Bolton Boulder, but this isn't me. I did go there though. It's located on Mount Jarag in Norway. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I found it. What is up guys? Welcome back to I'm So Craigie. Today it's another hiking video. My last one was well received by you guys. Thank you all very much. I think it's on about 9,200 views as of recording this. That was the Three Peaks Challenge one guys. So I thought I'd give you another hiking video. On this one guys, I'm in Norway and I'm hiking to Sharag Bolton Boulder. Excuse my pronunciation guys, especially the Norwegian viewers among you. It's basically a giant boulder that's been wedged in between two cliffs. It's on my bucket list guys. It's a massive tick off my bucket list. So I'm looking forward to getting there. Although the weather is shit, but you can't have it all, can you? To get to Jarek Bolton Boulder, you first need to fly into a city in southwestern Norway called Stavanger. It's super cheap to get there from London. My flight only cost me 50 quid. From there, you need to make your way to a tiny little village called Lisbotten, where the hike begins from. Lisbotten is found at the end of the Lisfjord. You can get there by boat from Oans, which is located just outside of Stavanger. What's going on guys? I just landed in uh, Norway from Gatwick. It's about one in the morning or I think it might be midnight. I don't know. My phone hasn't adjusted on the time. Um, and I'm looking for somewhere to sleep. I think this is all right. I think this will do. I think I'll just sleep here on this bench. I haven't pre-booked anything at all. I haven't paid for anything besides my flight. Lisbon is basically at the trailhead, so you can start the hike from there. Or it's not the actual trailhead, but there's a road that leads to the trailhead, so you can start the hike from there. Or try and hitch a ride, which is what I'm going to do, um, up to the trailhead, do the hike. I need to be in Oslo in two days' time because I've got a music festival that I'm going to with some of my friends from Oslo. Shout out, guys, if you're watching. Yeah, so I need to be real quick. Hopefully it all goes to plan. Like I said, I haven't pre-paid for anything. I haven't pre-booked anything, and I really haven't done much research. They're like an hours of research before I got my flight today. Hopefully it all goes to plan. Doesn't always go to plan. Anyway, this is where I'm sleeping tonight. I might sleep on the floor though. I might just sleep down there. Guys, if you are doing budget travel or like if you just want to travel more often but you can't afford it, so you're just trying to find ways to save money, little ways to save money when you travel, sleeping in airports will save you a lot of money. Like I've been doing it pretty much all my life, all my traveling life. So the last decade at least, I've slept in so many airports and it's it's not bad. Like you save yourself a nice decent amount of money on a hotel room. There's never any hostels near airports. Like it's one o'clock in the morning now. There's no point in me buying a room. Even if I did go into town and buy a hostel, there's no point. It's halfway through night anyway my bus is at six i've got like five hours to my bus just crashing the airport it's pretty peaceful like the lights are pretty dim here probably doesn't look it on the camera but they are pretty dim compared to downstairs anyway where it's all lit up you get left alone for the most part and it's pretty quiet as well uh yeah i save loads of money doing it this way guys and also public transport as well i've said it before in my videos i'm not going to be taking a taxi into town tomorrow i'm just going to be jumping on the bus people who watch my videos uh, quite often you'll notice that sleeping in airports how many times i slept in an airport on my channel now like, like so uh, yeah it's something to bear in mind guys I'm pretty sure there's a website pretty much dedicated to sleeping in airports so you just type the airport that you're in and it just tells you like, the best places where the comfy seats are where the lighting is dim and where it's quieter blah 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 I think it's literally called sleepinginairports.com but in any case I'll link it in the description down there guys I've looked check the website out it's super handy actually like how they've just got so much information on every airport around the world it's pretty cool that's what I'll be doing now anyway I'm in bed no one's around so it's nice and peaceful um, I'm gonna get some sleep because I've got a big hike to do tomorrow guys believe it or not so I'll catch you tomorrow guys peace out oh, I um had a pretty good sleep actually to be fair didn't want to get up so I got like 20 minutes to my bus I am not it oh no it's an automatic tap just got my bag wet. I'm knackered, I am. Um, <laughs> I had really good sleep on the floor. All right, anyway guys, I'm gonna brush my teeth, get ready, it's f***ing pissing down with rain. So, lovely day to be doing a hike. Not, let's get it done. All right, now that I'm all freshened up, let's go find this bus. When you leave the airport, turn left right outside of the exit and walk about 200 meters to the bus stop, which is located right outside of departures. Here you can get a bus to Stavanger by terminal, which is the main bus station in Stavanger. Take bus FB40. The bus is the cheapest way from the airport and costs about 38 kroner and takes about 30 minutes. You might notice I'm getting on the wrong bus here. That's because I thought I had to go somewhere else to get the ferry. I was wrong. So I just got on the bus. I uh, asked him what do you take cash? He's like, yeah, and I pull out all this change that I found in my cupboard before leaving for this trip that I thought was Norwegian money, but it turns out it's Swedish money, so I have all this money. 
I just had a handful of Swedish money, I just tried giving him it and he's like, nah mate, that's not, that's not our money. I'm like, oh, f it. I was like, can I pay on my card? He's like, nah, we don't accept card. So it's one thing to remember guys, they accept cash and app only. The guy let me on the bus this time for free, but I think he wants me to download the app and buy the ticket while I'm on the journey, so I guess it's not for free. He's let me on anyway, but I'll try and figure it out. From Stavanger, you'll need to change and take another bus to Strand Radhus, where you'll need to change again for a direct bus to Oans. I highly recommend downloading the public transport app for Stavanger. It's pretty impressive. It shows you where all the public buses are live on the map as they're moving, kind of like Uber does with nearby cars. You just type in your destination and it displays the route and tells you how much it's going to cost and when your bus is going to arrive at your stop, updating the time live if the bus is early or late. The app is called Columbus and is super easy to use. You can also use this app to pay for your travel too, although they don't even check, so I was just walking on without paying. Just like in Finland, the stops are displayed on screen so you know when it's your stop. I struggled to find a ferry timetable online for this route, so here are the times for you guys. The first ferry left Owens at 6.05 in the morning. I'd missed that one and had to wait for the next one. Which leaves here around about 5 past 1, so at the moment it's 5 to 10, so I've got a long wait and they don't have any beer here, so I bought my next favourite drink, Urge. Literally never heard of it, but it's made by Coca-Cola apparently. Yeah, so I don't plan, I don't like to plan things guys, I don't like to pre-book, I much prefer to wing things when I travel, which is why I've ended up in this predicament, but in any case, there's no chance I would have been making that 555 ferry anyway, so I actually haven't wasted any time. But a bit of a bummer because I'm not actually going to get to Lisbon now, I'm not going to get there till, till probably about 3ish, and it's about a 6 hour hike from what I read online, so I might have to do the hike tomorrow, but I haven't booked any accommodation there, I was hoping to get the boat there early this morning, do the hike, and and then uh, get the boat back in the evening and then stay in Stavanger tonight but that's not gonna happen so I'm gonna really hope that they've got hostels or B&Bs or something and that they've got room uh, stay there tonight get the hike done in the morning and then I've got to get an overnight bus to Oslo then tomorrow so really a bit tight for time but that's what you get if you want to wing things that's the risk you take so I got a little bit of time to wait I got no beer which is really a bummer because I could just sit here and enjoy the view and have a beer look at that view behind me mine but yeah that's it guys off to Lisbon I go been waiting here now for like three hours for this ferry. It's been a long boring wait, there's nothing to do here. Ferry should be here soon guys, then let's get to Lisbon. The boat from Oans is the much cheaper transport option, also operated by Columbus. There are two other companies which can take you up the fjord and drop you at Lisbon. These companies are Norled and Rodney, both of which are the more expensive commercial options. These boats depart from Strandkine Wagen Harbour in Stavanger and don't require travelling to Oans. However, these companies only operate in the summer, whereas the public boat operates all year round. Although I prefer not to pre-book anything when I travel because I like the adventurous side of just making it up as you go as opposed to knowing where you're going to be on what day and when you're leaving, it's more fun to just wing it. However, I would recommend pre-booking your ferry on the link in the description because they do fill up. I was very lucky to get on this ferry. It was fully booked. I had to talk my way on, telling him I had nowhere to stay that night as my accommodation was in Lisbon. He refused me at first and I just stood there watching everyone board the boat feeling absolutely 
gutted because this entire trip was now cancelled and this video would not have even been made because I had to be in Oslo in two days and the next ferry was the next morning. I would have either had to cancel the music festival or cancel the hike. I just wouldn't have had time to do both. Luckily he must have had a change of heart because he let me on. I was very lucky guys. Now I need to find somewhere to sleep tonight. It's really risky guys, the fact they never pre-booked anything because Lisbon is a tiny little place. So if there's nowhere for me to sleep, that's the last ferry now leaving. Yeah, I'm pretty screwed. So uh, I was a little bit worried about it until I met this guy, Alden, I think his name is. He was telling me that they have these little huts for like hikers and travelers to stay in. He said no matter how full they are, they'll always find a place for you to sleep, even if you're sleeping on a chair or on the sofa or even on the floor. So he said, don't worry about it. They'll always find a place for you to sleep because they don't want you being out in the cold overnight. That's pretty cool, so that's really eased my nerves a little bit. I don't always pre-book accommodation, guys. But when you go in places like this, it was a bit dumb not to, but I did try, actually, I did have a look. Cost of War showed nothing, Booking.com showed nothing. Anyway, I should be all right. Now I just gotta find the place. I'm not sure if Alden, by the way, dude, I know I'm saying your name wrong, so I apologize for that if you're watching. I'm not sure if he was talking about trail huts to sleep in or hostels in general, but the place at Lisbotten is a proper hostel, right across the road from a bar to winning. Just follow the road when you get off the ferry and it's like two minutes away on the left. The hostel is pricey, but I think it's the only place to stay there, so you don't really have much of a choice besides bringing a tent and camping. The cheapest bed they had cost £43 a night and was in an eight bed dorm. If you're a base jumper, you must have heard of or been to Lisbotten. Base jumping is legal in Norway, and with its giant cliffs overlooking fjords, it's known for some of the safest base jumping in the world because it's over water. Lisbotten is a very popular place for jumpers, as you'll see later in this video, and they even have a base jumping school called SBK Base. I one day want to up my game from skydiving and become a base jumper too, so I'll be back here one day. All right, on to the next problem. So uh, I can't get to the start of the hike. It's a seven kilometer walk to the start of the hike and then the hike is 12 kilometers from there. They do have a shuttle bus service that is operated by SBK Base, the base jumping school here, but I missed the last departure. So I did ask the ladies over there in that black Suzuki. I just knocked the window as I was walking past and I was like, sorry to be cheeky, but if I chuck you some money, will you drive me up to the start? And they were like, they're waiting for the ferry, so I'm going to try and hitchhike, but as you can see, probably not going to have much luck there either. There's been one thing after another with this trip, in here. <laughs> I mean, I like winging it when I travel, but this was stressful. I don't really know where I'm going, actually. I'm just going to follow this road. But this is the only chance I got to do it, because my ferry out of here is 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, because the 3 o'clock ferry was fully booked, which was really annoying because I needed that three o'clock ferry so I could do the hike in the morning but that's not happening now it's like three o'clock in the afternoon now it's meant to be like a five hour hike without the extra seven kilometers I'm about to walk so I'm pushing it but I've came so far into the butt middle of nowhere of Norway just to see this boulder I can't not try now at this point I need to be in Oslo by the 29th midday at the latest and bear in mind it's like a 14 hour coach ride eight hour train ride so basically tomorrow is just gonna consist of of getting away from this town and getting to Oslo so I can try and get there for tomorrow night. So this right now is literally my only chance to see this boulder. I hope this boulder appreciates the bloody commitment I'm putting into this. Still no cars. I think I'm gonna be walking it guys. Oh well, chin up. So that guy I mentioned earlier, the guy who told me about the accommodation, Auden, he's doing a pretty epic thing himself. Like he's hiking like 17 or 18 hundred kilometers from the south coast of Norway up through all these trails. He's staying off the roads, he's hiking, he's got everything he wants in his backpack. Um, he's sleeping in a tent, so he's not, not paying money on accommodation. Here, there's a car coming. Ah, oh, bummer, he didn't stop. Oh, he has stopped, he stopped. Brilliant. 
got myself a lift, guys. Absolute legend. Thank you so much for the lift. You're Cheers, mate. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your trip, man. Yeah. Legend. Appreciate that. You saved me so much time, man. Yeah, yeah. That was good. See you later. That was awesome. <laughs> I swear to God, I am the luckiest, jammiest person when I travel. What was I saying before anyway? Yeah, so that guy, he's 1800 odd miles, five months I think he said. Living in a tent, hiking the whole way. What a legend. Look at this f***ing view, mind. That is mint. So I'm at the start of the hike now, guys, so you'll notice behind me, there's a little restaurant slash cafe. There is a car park, I think it's one hour free. No one's gonna do the hike in one hour, so you gotta pay for it. Let's get it done, guys. The sign at the beginning of the hike said it's four and a half kilometers each way to the boulder, but on the Visit Norway website it says it's 11 kilometers all round. So I'm not sure which one's correct, but you need to be in good physical shape before heading out on this mountain hike, which has an elevation gain of 800 meters. Follow the rocks with the red T on them, and be very, very careful not to lose track of the rocks when you're in the dense cloud cover. Stupidly, I was texting on my way back and lost track of the red T's. I was lost on top of the mountain alone in the dense cloud for about an hour or two. I was so disorientated and couldn't find my way. So my advice is to take a compass, a real one, not an app on your phone. On your way back you want to just keep heading east and sooner or later you should find your way back. I was ill prepared and my crappy phone doesn't have a compass on it as a backup. I would also recommend downloading the Oot app. It displays all the trails in Norway. You will most likely get full signal on top of the mountain so you can use that to try and find your way if you do get lost. I stumbled across a lone tent with a girl camping in it who helped me find my way. Well, it's always the case, whenever I'm starting a hike, everyone else is finishing it. Like, all the time it's been like that lately. It was the same in Iceland. I was on my way up to the hot springs at the end of the video. Everyone else was on their way down. Guys, I'm at this hut here. This is just past the halfway point as far as I'm aware, so if you make it this far, guys, it's a good indication that you're halfway there. I've read online people talking about how this is one of the most breathtaking hikes, most scenic hikes in the world. But it's a shame because I can't see any of that. It's all cloudy. So guys, if you are going to come and do this hike, make sure you do it on a clear day because I did Google the pictures of it before I came and the view is incredible. I just can't see any of it. Very disappointed with the day. If you do find yourself up in the clouds like this, guys, just look out for these random pillars. And not just that, guys, also be looking out for the rocks that have the red T shape on it. All right, they're everywhere. Because it's very disorientating. You can easily get disorientated, guys. See, I came from that way and managed to find this, which was a struggle. But look at this. Where do I go from here? Like, before you could see the pillars or see some sort of indication from the one you stood at. Oh, look at that. I see someone coming at the shadows. It's like Silent Hill, isn't it? such a shame I couldn't see the amazing view. Now you see why I chose to use a googled image at the beginning of this video.
finally made it guys. It took me about an hour and 50 minutes to get up here. Now I want to get back down. This is the boulder. Check it out. On my way back, I stumbled across this badass couple, Erica and Stevo. Oh. You can see the ground. It's good. Ignoring the fact that I continued my trip to Oslo to meet some friends, I actually would have done this trip in just two days, and quite comfortably too. You can leave London late Friday night, get to Lisbon and do the hike on Saturday, stay the night there, then return to Stavanger on Sunday, and have a good five or six hours there to explore before heading back to London Sunday night, and comfortably back in work Monday morning. With a badass story to tell your co-workers about how you ventured into the Norwegian wilderness on your weekend. Me and my friends from work have been doing this little thing where I hide one of their names in one of my videos and whoever finds it gets their name in the next video. The first one was the words shut up Alum on my Iceland video which was found by Lewis, a fellow Welshman with eagle eyes. So in this video I've hidden Shemai Lewis Butt and I'm inviting you guys to play along too if you want to. If you find those words leave a timestamp of where it is in the comment section and I'll hide your name in the next video. And guys thank you all so much for 500 subscribers. I love you. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you on the next one.